MFA Updates. Hello, good morning. Welcome to MFA Update, a weekly program that features Thailand's foreign affairs and activities. And today, you're here with me, Grace n i s h a k a p u m i This week, we are going to talk with Kun j a m s a i Mena s w e t Director of the Administrative Affairs Division, Department of International Organizations, about the Non-Aligned Movement Summit 2024. The Foreign Affairs That Matter. Special guests from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. This is the MFA updates. Good morning. It's nice to have you here on the show, and thank you so much for joining us today. Yes. Good morning, and thank you for having me on the show. Yes. Um, so let's start with some background on the Non-Alive Movement Summit. Could you tell us the goals and the significance of this meeting? Yes. The Non-Alive Movement Summit. Or the Nam Summit, which um, was held um, in its 1 9 t h um, time um, in Uganda, in in the capital of Kampala, Uganda, this year, mm-hmm. um, was the meeting of um, world leaders of um, the the group, um, the Non-Aligned Movement Group, which um, was officially founded in 1961. Um, during the years of the Cold War, and uh, the first meet, official meeting was um, held in Belgrade, Yugoslavia, um, what was known back then mm-hmm. um, as Yugoslavia, and um, it has its foundation in um, the Afro Asian Conference held in Bandung, Indonesia, in 1955. Um, now, this Bandung um, conference um, resulted. In um, the Declaration of Ten Principles, which became known as the Bandung Principles, mm-hmm. um, so the Bandung Principles were adopted later as the main goals and objectives of the NAM. And um, these principles, I'm going to give you a few examples mm-hmm. um, um, to do with respect um, of fundamental human rights and. Objectives and principles of the Charter of the United Nations: respect of sovereignty and territorial integrity of all nations, um, recognition of equality among all races and among all nations, non-intervention and non-interference in the internal affairs of another country. So, um, if you think about when the NAM was formed, that was during um, the period when a lot of countries in the world were just newly. Um, Um, formed, um, they have recently gained independence. Um, there was a movement for decolonial decolonialization, and also it was the period of the um, Cold War, uh, um, a world that was divided into two polars between um, what could be called um, the communist camp and um, the democratic. Um, Led um, to democratic countries, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so um, the essence of the non-aligned movement in its name is to not be drawn to either side um, mm-hmm. um, that um, has divided the world during that time. Um, so um, the NAM has undergone through um, several years um, it, since its existence. Um, it's gone through um, different periods. The world has changed a lot. So these days, what it stands for is a um, um, loosely organized group um, of countries that come together to coordinate their positions and to exchange their views on um, important issues of international affairs, and that could be um, from. Um, Security issues to um, economic issues to um, sustainable development issues. Mm-hmm. So um, these day, this day and age, the NAM um, has to face a lot of new challenges. You know, um, we have um, issues that were not considered as threats um, 40 years ago, such as climate change. So it, NAM has become a forum where. Um, Developing countries come together to try and coordinate 
Eastern positions on, on these new challenges. Um, NAM now has 121 members, with the newest being South Sudan. Um, it was recently admitted to the group at um, the NAM summit um, just, um, I think, on the 20th of January. Okay. So that's when South Sudan was admitted. And could you share the highlights of the 2024 summit for us, please? Yes, um, the highlight of the um, 19th NAM, NAM summit is, of course, um, it being held in Africa after a long period. Um, so this is when um, Africa really shined. Um, the, a lot of um, the leaders from the continent came, um, and uh, also as foreign ministers, and also um, we the foreign ministers and leaders from the Arab world. The um, highlight was the declaration, the Kampala Declaration on Palestine, um, which, as everybody knows, is um, a main topic in international affairs these days. Um, however, Thailand um, was not part of the negotiating group on this document. And um, for, for NAM, the decision-making process within NAM is by consensus. So um, whichever outcome document that comes out, um, if you think about getting 121 countries to agree on something, that's um, quite near impossible, mm -hmm. right? Um, so the way if a country does not agree with parts or the whole of um, an outcome document, um, since you know it might not be in line with their foreign policy or if it affects their um, national interest in any way, they can place their reservation on record by um, writing to the, the NAM chair. Um, and that way um, it preserves the um, consensus, the nature of consensus within the group. Mm -hmm. Are there any specific issues that Thailand aim to advocate for in this particular summit? Um, well, Thailand is um, not the only ASEAN country um, in the group. Um, all 10 ASEAN countries are NAM members. Mm -hmm. So um, at this conference, um, Thailand um, advocated for um, reflecting issues of regional um, security and stability. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we supported the role of Lao PDR as the ASEAN chair mm -hmm. in um, finding and driving solutions to regional peace and security. And besides that, um, since the summit was held in Uganda, you know, we haven't had um, a high level visit um, to Uganda in a long time. Mm -hmm. And our deputy foreign minister participated in the summit. He held bilateral meetings with um, various countries that um, we don't really usually get the chance to meet. Mm -hmm. For example, he, he met with the foreign ministers of Benin and Lesotho, and he also called on um, the president of Uganda. So that was a really good opportunity for Thailand to um, discuss ways to further promote cooperation, especially on trade and investment in, um, in Africa. Mm -hmm. and, and also, um, our deputy um, permanent secretary um, was there, um, and she also met with ca counterparts from um, various countries um, that we don't usually have the opportunity to meet, um, such as Yemen, Libya, um, Syria, and um, we, you know, Zimbabwe, Guinea. Um, and we, we raised the issue of, um, um, we, we also um, met with them to request for their support for um, our candidature for the Human Rights Council mm -hmm. for the um, period 2025 to 2027. I see. And um, lastly, before we end the show, could you talk about like how do Thailand and the people benefit from participating in this conference and in what ways? Well, as I've said um, before, um, this was a good opportunity for Thailand to expand our cooperation both bilaterally and multilaterally with um, members of the NAM 
and um, we had, for example, the ch- our deputy foreign minister had the chance to discuss um, to bring up the um, the wish of Thailand to to um, negotiate a, a free trade agreement with um, the group in um, called um, SACU. Um, which is, this is an FTA um, among um, certain African countries such as South Africa, Botswana, Lesotho, Eswatini, and Namibia. So um, if we are able to negotiate this FTA and um, it, an agreement could be reached, then um, Thailand will benefit from having greater, greater market access in Africa. All right. Um, that was a very comprehensive details of the NAM Summit 2024. So thank you so much again, Kun Jam Sai, for joining us today. Thank you. You're very welcome. That was Kun Jamsai Mena Sue, Director of the Administrative Affairs Division, Department of International Organizations, discussing the Non-Alive Movement Summit 2024. And that's it for the program, MFA Update for this week. If you want to listen to more episodes, please visit the YouTube channel, MFA Thailand. And you can also find us on the Facebook page, FM88 Radio Thailand English. Thank you so much for listening, and I will see you next time. I'm Grace Nishikapumi. Have a good day. สวัสดีค่ะ MFA Updates.